Hello my tubies, Teletubbies. I'm sorry about the way that end. I hit a wrong button and it just went out crazy. I was like, please, please, Father, don't let me have lost it, please. And it, 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 it it's there, the, uh, part two is there successfully. Uh, thank Jehovah for that. Hopefully it can help um, make a difference in some people's lives and I don't know, help to restore some of these families, you know. Um, anyway, let's finish up. I, I think I... I rewound it a little bit so just bear with me dan's five does not teach shunning at all in the way that watchtower claims it does and second john does not at all teach you not to speak to someone who no longer is one of jehovah's witnesses it doesn't stack up to any kind of biblical scholarship or historical fact at all so jehovah's wow. witnesses who are currently shunning your family and friends I strongly recommend you look outside of Watchtower publications and read what actual scholars who understand first century history as best as anyone can, because it's piecemeal. We don't know anything for an absolute sh certainty. And actually read what the Bible really says and read what other scholars say about what the Bible says and stop listening to Watchtower's nonsense. They want you to shun people, not because the Bible says to do it, but because it keeps people under their control. If people think they're going to lose their family and friends, they're less likely to leave the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses. That's exactly the reason why they encourage the shunning. That's a, a, another reason why they encourage you not to make any outside friends outside of the organization, because... When you leave this organization and you go out there, you're going to find that you're alone. You, 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 you don't have anyone. I know someone who has been disfellowshipped like three or four times. And the reason why they keep coming back is because she couldn't find anyone out there. So she kept coming back. She's not happy with this organization at all. But now, excuse me, they have the XJW community now. Now, when she left, so far from what I heard, she's not back. She hasn't gone back because now she has a support system. The XJW uh, community is all on Facebook. You have uh, on YouTube channels. You exchange phone numbers with each other going back and forth. You have the instant messenger on your Facebook where you, you guys just, you just make new people, online friends. You know, you actually, I've actually had dinners with, you know, FaceTime. Where we sit at dinner, we plan dinner at 7 o'clock on a Friday, and we know uh, 7 o'clock we do the FaceTime. I put the tape right there. I'm sitting at my table right like this. They're sitting over there with the, the, the um, camera like that, and we're sitting here the same as if you were in a restaurant. You're going to be sitting opposite the person, and you're going to be talking and conversing, and I have done that. I do that a lot with my girlfriend, Teresa. We do breakfast like that uh, in the mornings, you know, um, FaceTiming. So it's like you're home. And you're, you're still having breakfast with your friends. Um, or like when I'm with this dating thing, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, I, I do that that dating thing also with at, with the FaceTime. Or um, I use the WhatsApp. I love WhatsApp and I use the IMO. So you have other people who may use FaceTime or whatever they use. As long as you got video chat. So you bring the people right into your home. You don't have to be alone anymore. They have the Jehovah Witness, ex-Jehovah Witness support groups out here now. You have ex-JWs that are getting together. They are making up, you know, that, that app called Meetup. They're making up ex-JW uh, communities and friendships and people are actually making the meetings. So you're not alone anymore when, they, when, they, when you go out there. You don't have to be alone anymore. Okay? I miss my family. I do. I love my family, and 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 it's hard on me. It's really hard because uh, the most important thing about me is loyalty and integrity. That's the most important thing to me. And when they have shown me that they lack loyalty and integrity, I, I, I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. I will never uh, feel the same way about them. I will never trust them ever again. Ever. You can't trust someone who is willing to just throw you away. Like what? I'm your mother. Are you what? No, that's that's insanity to me. But I still hope it's not too late for other families and that they can manage to pull it together and, and, and get their families back. You know what I mean? It probably will never, ever be the same because once you see what this person is capable of doing, you can never let your guard down again. 
You're willing to throw me away because of what some goddamn eight clowns sitting up in the tower tells you to do. What? No, no. Huge problem. I, no, I'll never be able to trust them again. Never. In fact, up until 1951, Watchtower taught that excommunication and shunning was a false religious teaching. Until 1951, when they flipped on that and started ex started practicing shunning, but only against people who were disfellowshipped. See, back then you could walk away, you could disassociate, and they didn't tell you to shun them. That didn't happen until 1981. Decades later, then they... Now, you see all of this information that they don't tell you? There was a time when they used to say that excommunication, which is disfellowship, was pagan. That was a horrible practice. And then, of course, you know, the new light. No, they wanted to have more control. More control because they saw how people were leaving. So now we got to make it so that they can't leave. They won't leave. We got to keep them trapped. So we'll hold, we'll blackmail, we'll kidnap their families. That's what they do. They kidnap your family because they know that if they didn't, you have that policy of throwing it, of people losing their family. You know how many people would be left in that organization? Hardly no one. Only people who don't have no life or people who are, are too old to do much of anything with their life, whatever. But not many people would be there. Most of those people are there because they don't want to lose their family. I remember when my son was disfellowshipped. He worked his way back into that organization. Why? Because he wanted to come back and serve God and go out in the ministry and all? He came back so he wouldn't lose his family. He didn't want to lose me and his sister. He got reinstated. He haven't been back to that place since hardly ever. He just didn't want to lose his family, which he didn't have to worry about that with me. Now, his sister, she's never had no integrity or loyalty anyway. I remember how she treated my mom you know, ready to throw my mother away. And my mother was not no alcoholic, no drug addict, none of that. She was going to throw my mother away because this other sister, she owned a brownstone. She owned it. My mom was a renter. She used to rent. So when my daughter saw that this woman had more, she wanted to go and be with, with, with this woman. She was ready to throw my mom under the bus. That's called greedy. What the Bible tells you, you shouldn't have nothing to do with people who are like that. You know what I mean? Or you should limit your association with greedy people. Materialistic. I'll never forget the way she was ready to treat my mom. If you don't have material things or money, or if you're not a man, she has no use for you. Not really. Or unless you're a female who, if you're not married, but you want to be married, and she feels, look, I got one up on you, she'll, she'll deal with you then. Or if you feel, you, you, if you have no self-esteem or you, whatever. But she has never been one to have loyalty and integrity, ever. Started saying you need to shun people who disassociate. Also, this is a progressive control mechanism. Right. Their grip got tighter and tighter and tighter. And now that's what they teach. But that's not in the Bible. Thank so you. So start showing natural affections to natural affection to your friends and family again. Don't shun them. That's not what Jesus wants. That's so completely contrary to the gospel of love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, what do you think? I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in a comment below. Be sure to like it. I love him. I love his wife. These people are helping so many people to wake up. They are saving so many people's families. They are saving friendships. They're out there doing a good work. He's making so many videos like one after the other. He's really trying to help people. He really is. And may Jehovah God and Jesus Christ bless him and all of those who are out there trying to restore families. There's a scripture in the Bible where it says anyone who, I, I got to find that scripture. Let me pause this for a moment. Hi, Tubies. I couldn't find that scripture, but I will uh, look uh, 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 look it up uh, on another time because I have a whole, I keep everything here. I, I keep, I, I'm just, I keep, I please, I keep notes everywhere. And I have got to find that scripture because I have a, a folder is what the Bible says, you know, how to handle certain situations and what to do. Now, in terms of people 
uh, this organization telling you not to honor your parents, but to treat your parents like they're dead and to treat your family like they're dead. That's ridiculous. When we uh, think about what the Bible says in terms of honoring your father and your mother, honor, when you translate it from Greek to English, it means to value. Honoring your father and your mother is being respectful in word and action and having an inward attitude of esteem for their position. The Greek word for honor means to prize and to value. How are you valuing your parents when you won't even talk to them? When you, 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 don't, you wouldn't even give your parents the time of day. That's honoring your parents? Uh, no. Honor is giving respect not only for merit, but also for their rank. Another problem I keep up my heads with my daughter. She won't, she won't respect my God-given rank. You know what I mean? Huge problem with her on that. For example, some Americans may disagree with the president's decisions, but they should still respect his position as the leader of the country. Similarly, children of all ages should honor their parents regardless of whether or not their parents deserve honor. If your parents are doing something wrong, Jehovah's got that Jesus Christ will correct them. That's not for you to do. You do what the Bible tell you to do. Do your job. God exhorts, exhorts us to honor father and mother. He values honoring parents enough to include it in the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. And again in the New Testament. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is what? The first command, the first commandment with the promise, so that it may go and be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. I just say Ephesians chapter 6, because I like people to read the whole chapter. So nothing is taken out of context. Honoring parents is the only, only command in the scriptures that promises long life as a reward. So when you want to sit here and tell your parents you don't have nothing we want or what we need, really? Think again. In contrast, those with a depraved mind and those who exhibit ungodliness in the last days are characterized by disobedience to parents. Look at those scriptures in Romans chapter 1, verse 30, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Read the whole chapter, please. Solomon, who was the wisest man, he urged children to respect their parents. And saying mean, hateful things like, you know, if you wasn't my mother, I wouldn't have nothing to do with you. Really? That's your idea of honor and respect? Okay, yeah, okay. Jehovah's Witnesses teach you very well. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, Proverbs 13, 1, Proverbs 30, 17. Although we may no longer be directly under their authority, their parents' authority, we cannot outgrow God's command to honor our parents. But Jehovah's Witnesses tell you to treat them like they're dead, throw them away. Really? Even Jesus Christ the Son of God submitted himself to both his earthly parents at Luke chapter five, Luke chapter 2, verse 51. And his heavenly father, he respected his heavenly father, Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Following Christ's example, we should treat our parents the way we would rever reverentially Approach our Heavenly Father. The same way you would treat your Heavenly Father is the way you are instructed to treat your parents at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9, Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. Again, you already know what I'm going to say. Please read the whole chapter. Obviously, we are commanded to honor our parents, but how? Honor them with both actions and your attitude. Mark chapter 7, verse 6. Honor their unspoken as well as spoken wishes. Listen to them, especially when they're trying to help you. 
They may not be perfect and they make mistakes. You can learn from their mistakes. At the same time, they still give good, useful advice. A wise son heeds his parents' instruction, but a mocker does not listen. Proverbs 13, 1. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 3 through 9, Jesus reminded the Pharisees of the command of God to honor their father and mother. They were obeying the letter of the law, but they had added their own traditions. You know, the Pharisees, like Jehovah's Witnesses, like this organization. While they may have honored their parents in word, their action proved their real motive. They didn't love their parents. Honor is more than lip service. The word honor in this passage is a verb. We know that verb is an action word. And as such, it demands the right type of action. We should honor our parents in the same way that we strive to bring glory to God in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. For a child, obeying parents, that goes hand in hand with honoring them. That includes listening to them. Not hearing. I know you hear me, but are you listening? Now, that's when they're young children. You know, when they mature and they become adults, after children mature, the obedience that they learned as children will serve them well in honoring other authorities, such as the government, police, and employers. So that helps them as they go along in life. We are required to honor parents. That doesn't include imitating ungodly ones. No, we're not going to try to be ungodly. My children got a mother who's on Jesus Christ and Jehovah God's team. They could never call me ungodly. And if a parent instructs a child to do something that contradicts or goes against, goes against God's commandments, then by all means, you know you must obey Jehovah as ruler rather than man. I don't instruct my kids to do anything that's going to hurt them or be harmful to them. I tell them, if when are you making a decision? You, you keep Jehovah and Jesus Christ in mind at all times. God will not honor those who will not obey his command to honor his parents, to honor their parents. If we desire to please God and be blessed, we should honor our parents. Not according to Jehovah's Witnesses, though. You're supposed to throw them away. Don't talk to them. Shun them. Okay. The Bible says that Colossians chapter 3 verse 20, obey your parents in some things, in everything, for this is what's pleasing to the Lord. Even when you're grown and your kids are grown, you know, they, you're not going to treat them like children. I don't see my kids as children anymore. I try to make them more like a friend. They're adults. Okay. At the same time, you, you, you know that I am always going to be your mom. At the, there's, there's just a certain, you know, I don't treat them like they're children or try to, I, 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 we, I'm having issues with my kids when they talk about, I don't respect their boundaries. Honey, it's hard to respect boundaries when everything is a boundary. Everything with them is a freaking boundary. You know what their number one boundary is? Don't disagree with me. Oh, and mom, please, Sorry, please mom. don't tell us the truth about anything. They don't want truth. They want the fantasy. They don't care about what's right, what's wrong, or the truth. That's why they won't do their research and look into this organization. They don't care whether it's the truth or not. They don't care. All my kids want is a yes, yes man. A puppet. Okay, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, Lewis, that's exactly right. Samara, you are so right. Oh, bravo, girlfriend. Bravo, yeah. That's all they want. That's all they want. And with my daughter, the most important thing to her is appearances. She only cares about appearances, uh, 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 some dude, if you got something between your legs that can help her out, whatever, and money. That's all she cares about. She don't care about uh, the truth. She don't want to hear the truth because the truth is not a part of the fantasy. It's not a part of the bubble that they want to live in. That's why we keep clashing. I'm about the truth. I'm about resolving problems and problem solving. Nothing ever gets solved with these people. And 
Anyway, oh man, it's exhausting. You wonder why I run to the freaking bottle? <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> I had to let the bottle go, man, because it's getting the best of me. And anytime something's trying to get the best of Sheila True Love, it ain't going to happen, okay? Like I said, I go on hiatuses, honey. I'll sit here and drink for a little bit, and then I'll do two months or three, 90 days off. No drinking at all. And then I might go back to having a couple of drinks on Friday, Saturday only, Friday, Saturday. Or if I have like a holiday, you get the extra day off, I might have cocktails then. I assure you that's far from being an alcoholic. Believe that. Show me an alcoholic that go on hiatuses for 90 days at a time. Uh, uh, help me. Anyway, Tubies. Continue to follow what the Bible says and uh, put Jesus Christ's teachings before anything that this governing body is telling you. Please do not be misled. Please. Please. And when you do your research, when it comes to the uh, organization, please do like the Bible tells us to do, which is... Yeah, I had to go here and look up the scriptures that when it comes to doing your research at first John chapter four, verse one, uh, it says, my dear friends, many false prophets are in the world now or in the world now. So don't believe every spirit. Listen to what Jesus is telling you, but test, do the research, look into it, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. How many false prophecies has this organization made? What is a false prophet? One who predicts things that do not come true and claim their prophecies are inspired by God. This organization is nothing but a false prophet. Now, don't forget to do your research. And don't forget to look up Romans chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be very careful of those who cause arguments and hurt people's faith by teaching things that are against what you learned. Stay away from them. People like that are not serving our Lord Christ. They're serving the governing body. They're serving the organization. They sit up here and call the organization Jehovah. Because when you leave the organization, they say, wow, I'm sorry that you left Jehovah. What? What? What planet are you on again? I never left Jehovah. And I'll never leave him or Jesus Christ. I had to fall back, like I said, when it comes to this organization. Because it needs to be redirected. That's what it needs. It says people like that are not serving our Lord Christ. They are only pleasing themselves. They use fancy talk and say nice things to fool those who don't know about evil. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 20 through 21. These are scriptures that I have here. I don't know if you can see it, but I keep everything. I want to know what the Bible has to say about everything. So when I make decisions, and I don't make perfect ones all the time. I'm not a, ro I'm not, I'm, I'm a human. I'm not a robot, okay? My kids don't understand that part either. They keep treating me like I'm a robot. Mom, you're not supposed to mess up. My daughter told me the other day when we, we had a family meeting at my son. She's uptight with me. She said, I guess it's because you're not perfect. I should have taken her in right then and there for therapy, shock treatment or something. Because you're not perfect, mom. <laughs> I was like, whatever, kid. Child, please. Anyway. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 through 21. Don't treat prophecy like something that is not important. But test. Here we go again. Test everything. Researching everything is what Jehovah and Jesus Christ has instructed us to do, right? They told us to research and look into it. We got scriptures to back it up. The organization tell us not to test or look into things. Now tell me, who should we obey? Should we obey Jehovah God and Jesus Christ or the organization? I, I can't speak for you, but I know who I'm obeying. Let me see. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 20. When you get a chance, please look into that one. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 8 through 9. I please beg of you to look into that one as well. And then you have uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. 
Hmm. Well, Acts chapter 20, verse 29 through 30, which almost makes me want to cry. It really makes me get emotional reading that one. That one says in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30, it says, I know that after I leave, Jesus says, some men will come into your group. They will be like wild wolves and will try to destroy the flock. Also, men from your own group will begin to teach things that are wrong. They will lead some of the Lord's followers away from the truth to follow them. You have people who have turned atheists because of this organization. That breaks my heart. That really breaks my heart. <laughs> this organization has so many things that is not in harmony with the Bible. And it's just filled with nothing but their policies. If you don't just comply with their teachings, they will destroy or try to destroy your family. You can't destroy a family that really love each other. You can't do it. You can't do it. The only way they could destroy your families because there was no love, no genuine love there from the get up. Okay. Second John chapter one, verse nine and 10. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine and 10. Please do your research. My tubies, my Teletubbies, I love you so much. I'm going to end this video because right now I'm feeling a little choked up a bit and I'm trying to pull it off and trying not to fall apart here, but I'm, it, it, it's, 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 it's hard. It, it's, ugh. I gotta go. I love you. I love you so much. Until next time, we'll talk again. Bye for now.